Hello, hello, my lovelies. I hope you're having a great day. Today we're going to be talking about Jeanette McCurdy releasing some snippets from her new book, I'm Glad My Mom is Dead, and this reveals a whole lot of things, including things about her childhood and relating to Nickelodeon and maybe Dan Schneider. So, without any further ado, grab a snack, grab a drink, and let's jump into it. Roll the intro. Welcome back. Now, if you don't know who Jeanette McCurdy is, Jeanette McCurdy is a ex-child star, probably best known for her role as Sam Puckett on iCarly, which debuted in 2007. And she has lived a very hard life. And she has recently been, you know, taking care of herself and been in therapy, and she's written a book. The book is called I'm Glad My Mom is Dead. And we're going to figure out why she named it that fairly soon because she has released snippets trying to promote her book and these snippets are very eye-opening not only does she talk about her parents her mom especially and just the things that she went through on the different sets of Nickelodeon shows that she was on so I'm gonna go ahead and read some of those things off for you right now in the first snippet that I read, Jeanette is talking about her mother and is saying that, you know, her mom basically exploited her for fame. Her mom had wanted to be an actress before her, before having Jeanette, and when that dream fell through, she started putting that dream on her daughter. And Jeanette never really wanted to be an actress. She did it simply to please her mother. And her mother would gaslight her, A-word her, um... Even not even letting her shower until, uh, not even letting her shower alone until she was 17, doing exams on her own daughter, including her downstairs and her chest. And this really caused Jeanette to have issues with her mother and not feel safe in her environment, which is really, really sad. Even going as far as to contribute her mother to having an ED where her mother had been restricting her calories since she was 10 years old. 10 years old restricting your daughter's calories? No wonder she ended up with an ED. Holy crap. That's disgusting. Like, that's just... How is that being a parent at that point? I'm sorry. Like, is this a monster or is this a mother? Like, how could you do that to your child? How could you do that to your child? As somebody who also grew up with a mom that fat shamed her quite a bit and one time even made a pig snorting noise because I was eating two pieces of pizza because I hadn't eaten that day. Um, yeah, moms can be a very big source for a lot of their daughters and sons EDs. Like, why do parents act like this because they don't fit the societal norms or they don't believe that they fit the societal norms? Like... Why? Why do this to your kids? It fucks your kids up and gives them issues with their body for life. Me and Jeanette are proof of that. So don't do that to your kids. Don't do that to your kids. Please don't do that to your kids. It is severely damaging. For real. Not only that, but she was going through, you know, these exams from her mom and not even being able to shower and just having this fame forced on her. I feel so bad for Jeanette. I feel so, so, so bad for her. And we're going to learn later that this isn't the only issue that she had growing up. Regarding acting, Jeanette says that she had wanted to quit from a very young age. She wanted to quit acting and her mother simply would not let her. And in one of the snippets, she recalls a time where she told her mother that she wanted to quit acting because she felt insecure about it, and especially because she had issues crying on cue. And her, her and her mother are in this car, and when she says this, her mother just breaks out into hysterics, is crying, is hitting the steering wheel, saying that this was our chance, this was our chance, how could you do this? And... It got to the point where all this craziness is happening in the car and Jeanette just basically says, never mind, never mind, forget I even said it, let's just move on, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, mom, which you should, like, 
she should not have been telling her mom sorry for standing her ground and telling her mom that she didn't want to do something anymore. First off, that's horrible. That's not okay. And then, as soon as Jeanette says this, her mom just flips a switch, the tears stop, she becomes deathly calm, eerily calm, and she even shades her mom by saying that maybe her mom, maybe she wasn't the only one that could cry on cue. Now we get to some parts about Sam and Cat and its production, and she says that she experienced double standards on set, and she doesn't blame. I don't think she blames Ariana for this, but they treated Ariana Grande a hell of a lot better than they did Jeanette, even though. They were on the same show, they were both in the same role as co-stars, the two main leads, and she says that she was, she realized the moment was when Ariana came in whistle noting because the night before she had spent the night playing charades at Tom Hanks's house, and that's what broke her, and that is just not right at all, and I just, I can't believe that, like... Also, they, they, she mentions that they didn't tell her that it was going to be kind of a collab with another star, that she was promised simply a spinoff of her own, and instead she got a co-star role with Ariana Grande. Now, the last bits that I read was that in one of the fittings, she was in a bikini, and one of the executives, I guess, had come in and started taking pictures of her, someone that she simply labels as the creator, came in and started taking pictures of her in this bikini and was encouraging her as a minor to drink alcohol. Uh -huh. What the fuck? What the actual Kentucky Fried fuck? Offering a minor alcohol. What the actual... I can't. Like, that's disgusting. And she mentions that when she was getting ready to leave the network, she was offered $300,000 to keep quiet about her experiences on the network. What went down to the point that Jeanette was able to witness things that would cause them to give her such a big check to remain quiet? Now, she mentions that she has refused the offer, and that's why she's talking about these things. But what happened? What happened that they offered her a fortune, essentially? Because $300,000 is a lot, especially to a kid or a young adult that needs the money and has just lost their job. Like... What happened? That's what I want to know. I know she's probably not comfortable sharing it, but it had to have been something bad. There had to have been something horrible, just truly horrible, that she was offered $300,000 to shut her mouth. Like, who offered her this hush money? Who offered her this hush money? This creator, she mentioned, which... The only person I could really fit the bill to be the creator would be the creator of the shows that she was on, which would have been Dan Schneider. And we all know that that man is not a good man. We all know Dan Schneider deserves to be in jail, okay? That's just my opinion. Don't come for me, Dan Schneider. I'm sorry. I loved your shows growing up, but your behavior is nasty. Your behavior is disgusting. Your behavior, unacceptable, full point blank, period. Like, I feel so bad for Jeanette and any star that has had to deal with Dan Schneider. Like, there's a whole bunch of videos. If you guys want to learn more about Dan Schneider and the messiness and dis disgusting and abhorrent behavior at Nickelodeon, I recommend Sloan's videos. I, I, I will always recommend Sloane's videos about this stuff, always, because Sloane has done his work and has a bunch of evidence and has done a lot of exclusive videos and interviews with people that have been on these TV shows, including Alexa Nicholas, who was on iCarly, I mean on Zoe 101, and worked alongside people like 
Dan Schneider, um, Jamie, Lee, Jamie Lynn Spears. So, yeah, go watch Sloan's videos if you want to know more about the whole situation with Dan Schneider and Nickelodeon. But I feel so bad. Like, just awful that she had to go through this stuff. And I'm so glad that she is now strong enough to speak out and speak up and say that something is wrong and I'm not going to take your hush money. I feel so proud of her for going through all this, for dealing with all this her whole life, her whole life, dealing with this her whole life and just being strong enough to keep going and getting through it. Like that is so powerful. And I hope if Jeanette sees this, I know she has a YouTube channel, she probably won't see it. But if she sees this, I see you, I hear you, and I understand. I understand on a very personal level, especially with the body checking and an overbearing mother that just wants you to be something that you're absolutely not, and it fucking you up mentally and emotionally and physically and having visceral reactions to certain situations and words and people and... I fully understand that. I get you. Like, I I get that. And I will be picking up this book as soon as it releases. If I'm able, I will definitely review it on the channel. Because if you guys don't know, I don't just talk about internet news. This is the end of, end of the video. Um, I don't just talk about internet news like this. I also talk about books. I do reviews. I talk about movies, TV shows, anime. I do reviews on those. I talk about those things. And I also talk about internet news and stuff that I find interesting. That's why the name's The Random Show. It's random for a reason. So if you feel like it, hit the likes, hit the subscribes, y'all. I love you all so much. And go, if in any capacity, go give Jeanette some love. She more than deserves all the love in the world, all the care in the world. So please go do that if you feel like it, because I feel like she deserves it. That's what I got for you guys today. I love you all so, so much, and I hope you have the best day. Bye.